that. Colleen is the best because she needs 10 of these fans. She is the most hateful, shadiest. I love her. Like whenever we hang out, I'll, literally the first words out of her mouth are, okay, like, what do you got? Who do you hate? Who's next? So I grabbed my dog for no reason, just grabbed the dog and pinched its skin and dug my nails into it. I can't believe I'm reaching in there right now. <laughs> Adam, you need questions for your Q&A? Are you a virgin? Now, if that doesn't validate any of the stories that she would be talking openly about her sex with her ex-husband to me, then I don't know what will. That person's sick, and I've never been a fan, so I was very shocked to see all that. Colleen used to message him nude photographs unsolicited of Trisha Paytas. Often send fans, adult and child fans, photos of Trisha Paytas's body. I had nothing to do with this. I do not condone it. I think it's the most disgusting thing, and above all else, illegal. A grown woman in their 30s doing this to someone who is in their house, been around their family, like, you have some issues. She's gaslighting, manipulating, oh, she's a narcissist and a rat. I would never make a mistake like that. So what's your, what's your sentence for, for her? Electric chair. <laughs> Hello everybody, it's me Salem, and I'm leaving you a voice memo before you get into today's video, where we will be doing a very deep deep dive into the Colleen Ballinger situation, inside the mind of Colleen Ballinger, her unsympathetic and unempathetic view on the situation, as well as an outside grander look on how content creators eventually end up being cancelled due to a lifestyle in front of a camera that makes people eventually lose touch with human connection, and how I believe that all of this contributes Contributed to Colleen Ballinger's delusional apology video response. But before I examine all those topics, I want it to be known that I have been made aware that there are lots of people who are fans of Colleen who are going around, hate commenting, and even sharing links to videos that are made about Colleen in a group chat just so that they can harass the content creators who are making videos on her. I want it to be known that if I do see any sort of tomfoolery, chicanery, buffoonery, or anyone else acting up in the comments, I am not afraid to block, delete, or even disable comments. This is my platform and I refuse for my voice to be silenced. With that being said, grab some tea, get snuggled up, get your comfort stuffed animal, and enjoy the rest of today's video. Uh oh. I have been gone for like two weeks. I was out camping with some family. When I came back, I came back to a lot of this. <laughs> What are you listening to? Toxic Gossip Train, Colleen Ballinger. Toxic Gossip Train. The only thing I've ever groomed is my two Persian cats. I'm not a groomer, I'm just a loser. And my little frame and my sweet little girl voice, it, it, it exudes something in people. And man, was I so confused what was going on. While the world was burning around me, I had no idea because I was out in the wilderness. Because of me camping, I so, stupidly missed the next stop to going on to the toxic gossip train all aboard the toxic gossip train but choo choo because i'm about to go on it right now first of all i want to say if you're looking for a channel that is like oh this is drama oh my gosh this is cancel culture click off this is real life stuff like people are actually being affected by it trisha paytas made a response video about all of this and let me tell you it takes a lot to make trisha paytas look like the rational person in a situation so you know that this is bad i will give a short rundown on the situation in case you've been completely disconnected like i was so you understand you know where i'm coming from what the situation is whether or not you support colleen or not whether or not you believe in the allegations which has literal proof by the way y'all all know damn well that responding with a ukulele to serious allegations was not the way to go can you guys imagine imagine if when shane dawson was being canceled he pulled something like that bye he would have been dragged to the ends of the earth oh but it's okay when colleen does it because that's her thing because she's quirky the only thing i've ever groomed is my two persian cats i'm not a groomer i'm just a loser 
first of all if you guys have been watching me for a really long time you guys know that since day one i have been very very vocal about the dangers that influencers can cause their audience members with extreme parasocial relationships so i want to deep dive today on colleen ballinger's parasocial relationship with her audience members how that formed and how that could have been avoided which i want to do a deep dive on the sociological aspect of how it's very easy for influencers with lots of power and status to easily become corrupt because I feel like a lot of people are surprised that Colleen um, has this sordid history and everything while I'm not shocked at all because I'm an influencer myself and I have seen people who look so innocent have like the worst hidden stuff about them I want to deep dive with you as to why that actually is very much possible in this industry and how it affects you and how it definitely took a hold of Colleen to make her lack sympathy and empathy and look at people and her fans as pawns rather than human beings and how that explains perfectly why she responded the way she responded with her ukulele video and why no one should be surprised because there is an explanation for absolutely everything that she has done as well as how it leads up to my final thing that i'm going to be talking about which is that she is not sorry whatsoever so pretty heavy stuff but it's all going to be very interesting anyone who's lost or confused as to how could this happen Happen? how can an influencer do this to their audience i'm here to explain to you exactly what happened so let's get into a mini summary of all the stuff that has been happening with the whole colleen ballinger situation part one what did colleen ballinger even do is it really that bad yes Yes, it was. Colleen Ballinger was considered one of the OG YouTubers back in the early 2010s. She was known as her alter ego as Miranda Sings, which is a fictional character that was created by Colleen Ballinger that first appeared on the internet in 2008. And in these videos, the character purposely sings and dances badly, gives tutorials, recounts her daily activities. Ballinger apparently created the character as a satirical caricature of bad and arrogant singers in her class that believed that posting their videos on YouTube would lead them into breaking into stardom. And not only that, the character Miranda Sings clearly is supposed to depict a very very neurodivergent person with a speech impediment who was incredibly sheltered and her character hints at also being essayed. I used to be obsessed with Miranda Sings growing up because I myself was a bible sheltered kid who was incredibly neurodivergent who loved singing who was also in theater class and choir class and I used to watch Miranda Sings and thought she was the funniest thing ever until I realized she was actually making fun of people like me. <laughs> but because I was younger, I didn't understand the jokes and the references and all this inappropriate things that she would do at the time because I was a kid. And the thing is, if you were a Miranda fan back in the day, you were also most likely a kid. It all makes sense as to why this is all happening now. A lot of people are confused as to like, but why now, why now? Because we're all adults. And revisiting her content is kind of like, oh my god, I can't believe I watched this as a child. You are incredibly inappropriate. And I'm not going to say that these are new allegations either. People have been talking about this for years now, ever since Adam McIntyre made the Dear Colleen Stop Lying video, where he talked about how he felt like he had been used and manipulated by Ballinger from the age of 13, which was around the time where I was also watching her and found her super entertaining. She would exploit him by using him for free work and he was only 17 when he made the video which is crazy they dragged him for years and years even though in that video he literally had receipts of Colleen exploiting him as well as sending him lingerie as a minor and in response to Adam's video Colleen Ballinger made an apology video which a lot of people think like well, why is this all being resurfaced if she already apologized? People were eating that up even though she didn't really address anything. It was just more so kind of like being very vague. It was just very sus and people still ate that up because, I don't know, 
they all collectively had one brain cell or something because the math was not mathing. So because of that, Adam got even more hate and he completely just dropped the topic. And this just goes to show how much our culture has shifted in just three years, which should be even more proof as to why having conversations surrounding victims and believing victims are so important is to avoid situations like this where Adam was literally being harassed for simply stating his truth. But the reason why this all had resurfaced back up was because a YouTuber by the name of Cody Rants uploaded a video in June. Cody came clean in this video about how they basically joined forces with Colleen to take down Adam when he released his video exposing Colleen. And so rightfully a lot of people got upset that Cody basically waited three years to admit that they contributed a massive part in the hate train towards Adam. And actually, they brought up things that were not stated in McIntyre's video, things such as grooming allegations, as well as the group chats called Colini's Weenies. This video, even though it was done with bad intentions, it really did bring to light all the deeper, darker stuff that was going on within Colleen's fandom. Things such as asking her minor fans in this group chat what sex positions they like, if they're virgins. Her asking them, can you tell me about like the first time you had your period, which is demented and weird. Why would you want to know that? As well as her friend, Corey having his own group chat with minors and the situation has just escalated to people from these group chats who are now grown coming out and talking about their experience with Corey and Colleen. How they were being trauma dumped on with Colleen's divorce at like 13 years old which is like girl what's a 13 year old gonna do? save your marriage like now and because of this story just becoming so big some fans were also calling out her brother trent ballinger on being inappropriate with minors too like this whole family like i can't they have serious issues apparently the apples don't fall too far from the apple tree and while all of this was happening colleen actually made a podcast with trisha paytas because she has been irrelevant for such a long time but she tried to desperately hang on to relevancy through trisha because trisha's literally always relevant by making a podcast called the oversharing podcast which was incredibly short-lived because then it was exposed that colleen had actually been paying for trisha's only fans in which she would body shame trisha screenshot pictures of trisha in sexual stages through a paywall and would send it in these group chats with minors, by the way. Colleen actually did come back to talk about all these allegations and everything. Um, not with an apology video, by the way. Not with like an in-depth researched video where she easily disproves the allegations because she says it's fake. So if it's fake and if they're all lies, it should be easy to disprove it, right? So just disprove it if you're that confident but of course she has no backing at all so she really did the most unhinged delusional out of touch thing i've ever seen in my freaking life and made a ukulele song addressing these very serious allegations toxic gossip train tie me to the tracks and harass me for my past these rumors look like facts if you don't mind the gaps i won't survive in the crash but hey at least you're having fun. Girl, shut the f up. You thought you ate that. <laughs> like, girl, this is not high school musical. This is real life. Part two. This is the worst apology video ever. Um, yeah, about that. There was no apology. Stop calling this an apology video. This has been deemed one of like the absolute worst response videos of all time people keep saying it's an apology video it's not an apology video it's not an apology video and by the way don't go give her views the song's terrible her notes were flat it only plays one chord the entire time her video hi might as well be called victim blaming the musical because that's exactly what it was and she was looking at us in the camera like it's all our fault the reason why she was talking to minors like girl bye and the entire time it was so uncanny valley like her eyes looking into it has no soul like she looks dead inside the vibes radiating off of her in that video is just of pure anger that she's been exposed because she just stares at the camera like this
as if it's our fault that she's facing the consequences to her own actions. That's not a human. There's definitely a zipper on the back, right? That's a skinwalker. It was giving skinwalker vibes. But a lot of people are saying that the song, oh my gosh, it's camp. Oh my gosh, this song's iconic. It's campy. It's stuck in my head. First of all, y'all are a damn lie. Y'all are a damn line. If it's stuck in your head, listen to another song. Like the whole video literally gives off such cringe vibes. This, be nice Salem, be nice. This woman really saying the word, stabbing me in my tiny little bony back. She's genuinely convinced that she is just this small, tiny, helpless little mouse that is being harassed. She literally used white woman tears to get out of the situation. That's literally what it was. And the reason why I bring that up, by the way, is because you guys know damn well, I've talked about this plenty of times on my channel, you guys know damn well if she was a smaller YouTuber or a person of color, she would be dragged to hell and back. She's playing y'all just like she's playing that damn ukulele. Weaponized tears in general are when people who are privileged in society use their emotions to their advantage to manipulate and dominate not only people of color but people who are below their power status. This is a manipulation and gaslighting tactic that Karens often use. The term Karen is a slang term for an obnoxious, angry, entitled, and often racist, middle-aged, privileged white woman who uses her privilege to get her way or to police other people's behaviors into getting what she wants. Sounds familiar, huh? But instead of directly using white people tears, Colleen kind of sang her way into trying to make people feel guilty and bad for her through her lyrics of how tiny she is and how helpless she is and how it wasn't her intention that she's being bullied and she's being harassed and this and that when in reality none of that is true. I'm sure that there's a hundred percent people who are going way too far in her dms or making terrible videos about her and taking Lily way too far but from what I've seen the majority of the people just want a private and public apology like they don't actually actually want her to go through any physical or emotional pain. Like I said, I'm sure that there's a bunch of people who do, but the majority of the people don't want that for her. In fact, the majority of the people who do end up being canceled or whatever and whenever a youtuber does apologize the backlash tends to cease pretty quickly afterwards which is why a lot of people end up forgetting a lot of the controversies that youtubers put themselves into i just think it's very telling that colleen easily could have just apologized but instead she decided to victimize herself and use white woman tears through her ukulele at an attempt to make everyone watching feel guilty which is so funny because she literally sings those verses in her response video too, which was extremely passive aggressive. She's gaslighting, manipulating, oh she's a narcissist and a rat. I would never make a mistake like that. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't realize that all of you are perfect so please criticize. And in order to hit home on the victim narrative, she immediately makes it seem like she's just this shy, little, humble, innocent woman saying, oh, I, I didn't mean to do that, <laughs> with her following lyrics. And stab me repeatedly in my bony little back. Yeah, this is actual manipulation and gaslighting. Um, the song is not camp, it's not iconic, it's not good. It's terrible and it's insulting to the victims. Is it possible that Colleen Ballinger is currently being victimized by hordes of harassment and vile and evil DMs? Yeah, of course. But the difference between Colleen being a victim of online harassment and then her own personal victims that she's created is that Colleen Ballinger can quit social media whenever she wants, run with her check, and live in peace forever, while the victims have no choice but to work for either the rest of their lives or however long their healing journey is to get over all the stuff that Colleen Ballinger has done to them. Yeah, I don't think that it's equal. Even though within her song, she's trying really hard to convince us that it is equal. And if anything, what she's experiencing is actually worse than her victims. Because by us trying to hold her accountable, we're stabbing her in her little bony back, guys. Aww. Stab me repeatedly in my bony little back. Part 3. Miranda Sings isn't a character. It's actually a mask for Colleen to do all the vile stuff she secretly wants to do. 
that Miranda Singh's character, I know was purposely supposed to be a horrible person, but I didn't think the actual person playing the character would be even worse. Of course, as a child, I was taken back, but now as an older person, I'm like, actually, that makes perfect sense. You know why it makes perfect sense? Because Colleen herself has admitted that she basically is the Miranda Sings character and that she uses Miranda Sings as almost this scapegoat to say the things that she actually really wants to say. Yes. <laughs> Do you ever mean what she's saying? Yes, all the time. There's a lot of times where in character I'll say something so cruel or, um, you know, something I'm thinking but I would never actually say as myself. And it's very liberating to be mm -hmm. able to say things that I'm thinking. Can I give you some advice? Yes. Never tell people when those moments are. Which is very telling to how she is as a person that she wants to make this character be almost like this vessel of all the bad, inappropriate things she can't do as Colleen, but to do it through. Miranda. And the worst is that she made a massive amount of profit off of playing this character. There's a difference between making money off of your passion and your talents and then making money off of exploiting the stories that small children tell you that you use to fuel your character online, thus gaining a lot of money. And when I say that Colleen Ballinger made a lot of money, I'm talking like eight million in one year like she was massive back in the day and she made so much money and because of this there was a lot of power involved she had a lot of interviews netflix specials her own netflix show live shows tours the power it gets to your head and she's definitely someone that that happens to and there is a direct correlation with money and power to people's empathy levels it's scientifically proven that the more wealth that you accrue the more your empathy and sympathy for other people go down. So I'm not surprised that this mixture of being privileged mixed with being completely sheltered has made her almost look at human beings not as human beings but pawns or things that she can use to her advantage. And again, this is not me talking, this has been scientifically proven. This is why we constantly see rich people in general and also influencers, Instagram people, uh, certain rich YouTubers act so out of touch with reality because while the normal person is working a nine to five, um, David Dobrik is doing something like this or Jeffree Star is out here doing something like this. That's why when people are shocked when YouTubers do things that are crazy like doing their makeup in a Tesla that's driving on the freeway while they don't actually drive, wealth really does mess people's brains up. Like it really, really does. So it makes them out of touch with reality they can't sympathize with normal people they don't understand that normal people have feelings they just see them as kind of like a tool for advancement for themselves which is why colleen was so comfortable asking these kids these questions because she was literally trying to reap out those traumatic experiences for material to create more videos for her miranda singh's character it all ties together and here's another thing i do believe people through hard self-reflection through a lot of therapy, through a lot of work, anyone can change. I really do believe that. Humans are capable of amazing things. Humans are meant to be transformative. They are not meant to be stagnant. It's okay to make mistakes. However, it takes a lot, a lot of work. It takes a lot of apologizing. It takes a lot of owning up to your bullcrap. It takes a lot of setting your pride and ego down. It takes a lot of admitting that you are the one in the wrong, that you are the problem. And I have yet to see that in Colleen. Sis really busted out the ukulele and thought that that was good enough somehow. I don't know how, but that's crazy. Here's the thing that I want everyone to know. There are different types of self-accountability. You can take accountability for actions that you have done to a person who is already dead, right? You can't really apologize to that person because they're already dead, right? So what you can do is take self-accountability and work together with yourself to become better, right? But let's say the person is still alive. Now, if you have done someone dirty and they are still alive, but it's a personal, private relationship, then you have to work one-on-one -on -one with that person to make things better. If they reject that, then it's up to you to still work on yourself and become better. Now, when it comes to self-accountability on a platform, where you have done horrible things to other people, 
through that platform, self-accountability is going to look completely different and you cannot approach it as if it's a private relationship or that it's a relationship with a dead person that you've done dirty. Self-accountability, when you are a person of power with an audience and a platform, is going to look completely different because it is completely different. The way that you need to go about it is you can't just feel accountability and be like, that's good enough, I felt it, I already feel guilty, and I'm done and I've grown. So when you have a platform, because everything has been so out there, you have to say verbatim what exactly it is that you are doing to get better. Colleen has definitely taken the route of, well, I already did my dues of feeling guilty, so I'm basically good and I don't need to apologize and I already took accountability in private even though this problem was public and that is the problem. This stuff was not private, so you cannot take the route of accountability in privacy. It has to be public. And you might be thinking, well, that's unfair. No, not really, because the cause of harm was her platform and she used her platform to harm others. So the only way to have redemption would be taking accountability on that same platform. If you want to be perceived as a good human being again, it's going to take a lot of work, like I said, but also takes redemption. And redemption is a really tricky thing because it's not so easily earned. Part four how Colleen Ballinger easily could have redeemed herself, but chose not to. Now, the reason why I believe Colleen Ballinger is a selfish human being is because the victims, and even Adam, all they asked was for a private and a public apology, and that that would be enough, but she couldn't even do that. She had a shot of redemption. She had a pathway to forgiveness, and she denied it. You had a way out, girl, and you made it actively worse by playing the damn ukulele because of her pride and her ego. All of this, falling apart like this, is on you. Wow. <laughs> wow. But no, you just had to blow it up. You and your pride and your ego. Let me tell you guys something. There has been many situations that I'm sure you guys have, have been in I know I have where I was the person in the wrong. And now no one likes to be on that end because no one wants to admit that they're the problem. However, if you crave redemption and if you crave peace far more than being right, that's not gonna be a problem for you. It takes so much more work to continuously be petty, to uphold your ego and pride, than to just simply let go and ask for forgiveness and to apologize. Because at the end of the day, your intentions can be a million percent pure, but if the person was still hurt and still affected negatively, you still definitely should apologize. Because even if you weren't in the wrong, as Colleen believes she's also you know, not in the wrong, then it should absolutely cost you nothing to simply apologize and move on if you believe you are the one in the right. Which is why I just don't understand why she approached the situation as she did. In her little, you know, toxic gossip train little song, she literally mentioned a lyric that was about how we, the people, apparently ruined her reputation. So she literally does not understand that it was herself, that it was literally her who did it? Like she was the one who brought this all on herself. I do believe that intentions are everything in every situation. However, in situations such as this where the damage has gone way beyond your intention, intentions honestly don't matter at that point. And what does matter, the main focus is that you now face, turn your face to the damage that you have done. That is the only option. And unfortunately, Colleen has continuously decided to look away from the damage that she's done. However, what she does do is whenever she makes a mistake and she feels guilty over it, she beats herself up over it and she supposedly addresses it, um, she feels like feeling guilt is enough to change. So then she rewrites the past and then approaches the future as if that mistake never ever happened. How could you possibly ever look at Trisha in the eyes and talk to her as if you didn't do any of that stuff as if you didn't body shame her and say to her face that you thought she was beautiful and that body shaming was wrong when you yourself 
have done the same thing. In Maui, we just saw a whale. We saw a whale. We saw a whale tail. And I'm not talking some girl whose song is hanging out of her pants. I'm talking about an actual whale tail. It's all <laughs> yeah, we did see a square. And I'm not talking about your tapetas. I'm talking about a whale. I don't think people understand that open communication and transparency and honesty will always win in the end. Cause here's the thing, I'm a person who values the truth over anything, even if it's gonna hurt my feelings. Cause the thing about me is confrontation and being open and transparent doesn't equal an argument to me. There are people out there who view confrontation as immediately this is gonna lead to an argument. And let me tell you, if you are talking to people with low emotional intelligence, they're going to take your truth and your confrontation as an argument. And you can tell Colleen is a person who views confrontation as problems and she has said so herself in these podcasts that she feels that way she also texted adam mcintyre that she's such a sensitive person and this and that here's another wild concept sensitive people who have been hurt and have trauma can also continue the cycle of toxicity you can be a sensitive person and still very much hurt other people you can 100 percent be a victim and still create more victims just because you're a sensitive person doesn't mean you automatically feel sympathy and empathy being a sensitive person could also mean that you're very sensitive to criticism from other people which seems to be the type of sensitive that colleen is not the other one and i don't know what happened in colleen's like childhood or something for her to make her view conflict as something bad but sometimes conflict in relationships and friendships can be good when you use them as a learning experience. But the thing about Colleen is that I never, I never saw that. This group chat existed for years, years and years and years. And not once did she think until recently when all of this was, was brought to light that it was wrong. It was a continuous relapse in toxicity. And so I'm just shocked that you can for years repeat the same behaviors and not even feel an ounce of maybe this is wrong maybe this is not the best thing to do it took her years to acknowledge that and to come to that realization and to then claim that she has had that reflection finally yet not acknowledge the hurt that has been left behind because of her realization and barely now acknowledging it a lot of people were saying no matter how she responded people were going to cancel her anyways true but it would have been better if she was just open and honest and upfront and transparent about everything that she did and have people get mad anyways because at least she can go to bed saying you know what i was upfront and honest and i took accountability and i'm sorry and if people don't want to forgive me even though i was being completely 100 percent honest then that's on them but instead she went the other route of like again i'm gonna avoid conflict i'm gonna walk on eggshells and i'm not gonna address anything in fact i'm going to detach myself from this situation so much so that i'm going to make it a joke I'm gonna make it into a little silly song because that's how detached I am away from it. An interlude. We need to talk about the victims. There is going to be a lot of themes and topics and situations that are left out of this video because at the time of recording this video, every single day there is someone else coming out with their story. Every single day there is new footage resurfacing of Colleen. So I want to apologize in advance if I don't address a certain situation. But one thing that I know that remains true in this situation is the lack of empathy that Colleen's fan base and Colleen has for her victims, as well as the lack of accountability for the people who enabled Colleen to do all of this stuff. It's also been brought to a lot of people's attention that Colleen Ballinger has lawyered up and Ballinger's attorneys are Andrew Brettler and if you guys don't know who that is, um, he has represented clients such as Danny Masterson, Prince Andrew. Yeah, that should tell you <laughs> exactly everything about the situation and who's guilty and who's not. You know what's insane to me though? This might be a very, very unpopular opinion, but if you're wealthy enough to hire lawyers like this, then not only is that like me personally, in my opinion, in my opinion, to me is an admission to guilt, honestly, because it's like a girl. 
do you need to lawyer up that hard with people with a reputation that's kind of like sus that's my opinion by the way allegedly anyways i'm not trying to catch a case but you know what's crazy she is spending all of this money with lawyers taking people's videos down trying her absolute best to send hordes of people paying them to go harass certain influencers and take down their videos and everything you know what's cheaper apologizing when you apologize you don't have to spend any money doing that in fact my very unpopular opinion is that if you're able to afford all of this stuff to clear your name you might as well also pay for everyone's therapy also refund their tickets and i think that that's not a lot to ask for it just shocks me because it really shows me how how much pride and ego can really blind someone to simply just thinking that paying money this much money stressing this much being this just unempathetic is a better option than simply just saying sorry i just don't understand how that works in someone's brain i really don't every single victim of colleen's deserves an apology becky adam the weenies the people who are part of Corey's chat which i am not going to repeat because his group name was so inappropriate that i'm even shocked kids were even a part of that group with that group name johnny and oliver as well as one victim no one seems to bring up as much as the others um is emily they open up about how colleen mocked their pain disorder with fibromyalgia and haters back off by giving the mom character a disorder in which she supposedly fakes and oh my gosh that's just so awful you guys know that i deal with invisible illness which means that i am very ill and i have chronic fatigue and all of these things but i don't appear like i have all of those things and i've been accused of being trying to play victim i have been accused of faking it and i can only imagine being gaslit not only by the people around you but also by an entire tv show and being made fun of so my heart goes out to not only emily but all the victims who simply just wanted closure and my heart also goes out to the people who are completely silent at the moment out of fear of receiving insane amount of backlash you know what you have gone through you are valid it's okay it's okay to take your time it's okay to try to process it if you're not ready to share your story you don't have to do it all according to your own time as whenever it feels best for you i know that adam has brought up in other videos when talking about victims how colleen in this group chat with adam would also make fun of certain fans who have told colleen that oh you saved my life i love you so much i got a tattoo of you Adam said that Colleen would make fun of those fans behind their backs and I'm just really disgusted. I feel like that's really dark, deep, demonic behavior to make fun of someone who admires you and says that you saved their life in a time of their darkness and to make fun of that time in their life where you were their light and to make fun of that that's demonic and i don't mean that in like a spiritual sense where i think colleen is demon possessed i literally mean that it's just it takes a very cold-hearted person to do that adam has also spoken up about how colleen would make fun of fans changing their pronouns which is like i will never understand that argument of the whole like oh pronouns are so tiring it's like they're really not they're really not like bye let people figure themselves out let people do what they want like it's literally no sweat off your back if you just give them the room to grow and change and it's always so shocking to me that colleen has this pattern of behavior of only ever attacking minority groups such as the neurodivergent community chronically disabled community people of color community <laughs> and for someone who often says that they're pro lgbt and all of that stuff it makes no sense for her to make fun of people's pronouns and i think the worst part of all of this is that for some reason and somehow colleen is getting the most sympathy and empathy from the people who are siding with her than the people who are coming out and talking about their stories and interactions with her even though there is clearly a repeated behavior and abuse and privilege and power that she carries and she enacts that over people that she sees as simply pawns or objects that she can use for her content here is another wild concept 
people who have been good to you and people who have given you interactions that are nothing but good has never talked bad about you has never hurt you can a hundred percent be bad to other people just because your experience with someone was very nice doesn't mean that everyone's gonna have a nice experience with that person i had this teacher in high school that would continuously gaslight me manipulate me and also i would say was on the verge of grooming me honestly and it was very very stressful it was a very hard time in my life because every single person loved this teacher so much they thought that they were the most charismatic teacher ever that they were so smart so talented but meanwhile this teacher was sending me winky faces through my personal email finding out that i had a sister found out that i had a boyfriend and got mad at me would tell me to come see him after class after school like it was really difficult for me to go through because I just felt crazy when years later I realized what was going on between my teacher and I and how much of an inappropriate manipulative relationship we had. But what hit even harder and what made me feel like just defeated the most was when people were saying that they do not remember that he was like that at all and that really made me feel crazy but thankfully i do have a strong support system of people that i still know from that era of my life that are very understanding and they acknowledge like hey this teacher might have been very kind to me but that does not take away the fact that he most definitely singled you out and made you feel very uncomfortable and for that i'm very sorry and that really meant the world to me but that's why it's so easy for me to sympathize with people like Adam who also say that they felt like they were purposely singled out in this manipulation with Colleen or other people who are victims of Colleen who say she was able to convince my parents that she was a good person and that's why I went as far as it did that's what people like that do they convince everyone around them that they're good people so that they can continue their dirty work in the dark and if you have ever felt like you have been singled out with someone that everyone else says is just so great and so charismatic yeah you're not crazy they are horrible and you know the truth and if you're afraid to speak that truth i totally understand you because i have been silent for years about my situation because i'm just so terrified that everyone's just gonna be against me because everyone loved this teacher so much and still loves him so much that i just feel like even me coming out with my truth i would just be defeated right away so there's no point in speaking my truth which is so shameful and it's so horrible that victims have to feel that way because our voice matters just as much and for the people who are saying the victims are clout chasing or lying and this and that when i tell you there is no there is oh my gosh sorry i'm getting so frustrated <laughs> there is literally nothing that you gain by coming out as a victim of anything ever you do not get clout you do not get attention you do not get more oh subscribers this and that you know what you do get you get harassed you get gaslit you get manipulated you get told that you're doing it for clout you get attacked well because the last thing that victims need is belittlement they need for us to believe them and support them and to exasperate the situation i feel like is really inconsiderate and just a cold-hearted thing to do in general there are also a lot of people who keep defending the people around colleen palinger such as corey de soto as well as her ex-husband josh um and i just think that that's not a very good way to go about the situation a lot of people are like you know it's bad when her ex-husband comes out and talks about how, how manipulative she was and this and that okay and he was very much compliant in all of those behaviors he was very much well aware and you know what he did nothing that's exactly what he did he did nothing he was an enabler and i don't know why everyone's praising josh uh, for it as well as james charles like everyone keeps forgetting that james charles and shane dawson were massive friends of colleen ballinger's at the time and james charles oh my gosh i'm like trampling over my words i'm getting so frustrated james charles literally was the number one person that adam said drove the hate train towards him because james charles 
was super big at the time. I mean, now he's irrelevant, but anyways, he basically was saying on Twitter how Adam's a liar, that he's doing this for cloud and this and that, just jumping on the hate train to make sure Adam's voice gets diminished as fast as possible. And are we surprised? Because James has also been accused of talking to minors. So I guess birds of a feather stick together. I think that people surrounding Colleen, enablers, people who were encouraging her to do this, people who were partaking in this behavior have just as much accountability as Colleen in this whole situation. It's the same thing where if you see someone getting beat up on the street or a little kid being bullied and you as a bystander do nothing but just stare, you are also part of the problem. And I know that a lot of people have come out and talked about how they have partook in these things with Colleen and have since apologized and obviously that's good that they have apologized and have had a change of heart but it's crazy to me that the number one person in all of this, Colleen, still hasn't. It's also insane to me how deep this goes and how deeply entrenched she was in just these group chats, these memes, these twitters, youtube, all of this stuff like social media was her entire life. And when I tell you guys, I am not surprised to be hearing all of this because whenever there's a big YouTuber or an influencer who makes social media their entire life, everything goes terribly, terribly wrong. Part 5. Humans were not meant to live their life through a camera lens. You know what else is insane? The fact that Jenna Marbles made like a three hour apology video about using the wrong tank for her fish and that video was better than Colleen's ukulele song apology victim blaming video. What dimension are we living in? Th that, sh that alone should show you guys that humans were not meant to live their life in front of a camera. The longer you spend in front of a camera filming everything because this woman films everything she films her pregnancy her children she films her children her breaking up her dating this and that i just feel like the more you do that and the more you live life behind the camera and the more you make this what i'm doing a part of your life more and in deep into your life the more that you self-sabotage because humans were not meant to live like this which is no wonder why when certain youtubers reach a certain number like of a million subscribers or whatever they soon get exposed for all these crazy things because it's like their behaviors become more and more unhinged because it's not normal for a human being first of all i don't think it's normal for human beings to be famous i really don't and i also don't think it's normal that human beings now have influencers and celebrities and this and that and TikTok and how accessible people are making themselves is not normal i got my own life beyond the camera i want to keep this what i do separate from my actual life because i absolutely love my life and i wouldn't want to film every single waking moment of my existence because i want to actually enjoy things and on my deathbed i want to have actual genuine human connections and genuine human memories and i don't want my last memories on my deathbed to be me filming those memories it's so out of touch with reality that's again that's why i'm not surprised why colleen responded the way that she responded because she openly has admitted that she has over filmed things that she has over shared that she shared too much of her life that she made this thing too much part of her life and when you do that you detach yourself from having genuine human connection and you guys know if you guys have watched me on my channel for a while you guys know that i am a huge advocate in human beings and living your authentic life and having authentic genuine human connection and how that can save you and i really do think that that's an important factor to all of this that power fame and detaching yourself from reality can really affect the decisions that you make in life and i really do think that colleen ballinger is one of those people who definitely craved fame from a young age and once she got it she knew exactly how to abuse it something that i want to end this video on is just the importance that we have and the power that we have as influencers the relationship that we have with our audience is incredibly important now you guys know 
I have been talking about parasocial relationships for such a long time and the dangers that it can cause. For those of you guys who don't know what parasocial relationships are, basically what it is, is feeling like you know someone personally when you don't, whether it's an artist or an influencer, YouTuber, whatever. But parasocial relationships begin once healthy boundaries end. It's when you start prioritizing your relationship with the celebrity or influencer over your real life relationships and life. When you start feeling tethered to this person and you start losing your own personality, your own beliefs, your own sense of self because you feel so enveloped in this person. And that is 100% what was happening in these group chats with Colleen Ballinger. These young impressionable kids had such a strong, strong parasocial relationship with her to the point where they were entrusting her with their life experiences about their periods and stuff. And she knew that, which is why she felt comfortable asking these kids can you tell me about your period like that type of stuff you know she also knew that she had a parasocial relationship with her fans and that she could use that to her advantage when she would ask them to defend her when she was being canceled or can you check up on my ex-husband to see what he's doing like stuff like that and i'm honestly quite sick and tired of all the victim blaming that i keep seeing of where were the parents though of these kids i don't really came out with this story for attention where was his mom these are bad parents look you can blame parents all you want which to an extent you absolutely can i think in certain cases it's all on the parents but let me tell you guys something i have worked with kids basically my entire life i worked with kids for such a long time and the truth is about kids to a certain extent you can't control what your kids do because kids are so strong-willed and when they love they love intensely and they love deeply and when they believe in something it's very, very hard to get them out of that mindset. Teenagers will create secret Instagrams behind your back. They will sneak out. Kids will get involved in things that you never even knew existed because kids are curious and they're experiencing the world for the first time and they just wanna be a part of everything. And even if that thing is bad, they still want to find that sense of community. And the reason why it's so hard about getting these kids out of those communities or group chats or whatever is because kids and teenagers don't tell people for a reason. They're scared that it's gonna be taken away from them. And they don't want that connection, that parasocial relationship to be taken away from them because they believe that they love that person, which is in a sense grooming. It absolutely is. And again, it's not the parents' fault. Kids are going to tell you things that are crazy. When I worked as a mentor for preteens, I had a lot of little kids come up to me and be like, Miss Tovar, could you please be my new mommy? Which first of all would always break my heart. But second of all, it was up to me to set the boundary. See what I wouldn't do? is go then sleep with their dads like you know what i mean like you have to set that boundary and you have to set that boundary hard I also have kids open up to me about very traumatic things that they have gone through now what you don't do is then share your own experience with the child about what you have gone through that's similar or whatever these are boundaries between adults and children and minors if you think that it was appropriate but actually no as someone who is literally trained to talk to people and mentor young people. What she was doing was completely wrong. That's just the truth of the situation. Even if you don't wanna hear it, even if you are so tied with nostalgia and still in a parasocial relationship with her or whatever, that is just the truth of the situation. It was completely inappropriate, made no sense. She could have gone about it way better, but she didn't. It was Colleen's job to set those boundaries. It was Colleen's job to, at the end of the day, not interact or strengthen that parasocial relationship with her fan base, especially the fan base of minors. In her little ditty, you know, her little song, she talked about how her Miranda Sings character was PG-13 and, and that that's on the parents for not knowing, letting their kids attend, knowing that I was gonna make jokes like that. It's like, sis, to an extent, yes, but you're still the center of it all. Parents would not be taking their kids if you did not exist. You know what I mean? Like, it still falls squarely on your shoulders. 
or your little tiny bony back as you said as influencers and as youtubers and celebrities or whatever as people in power as you know even mothers and fathers mentors coaches whatever counselors as people in power you still have the obligation to keep the people safe around you period it does not matter if they're a minor or if they're older than you you should be the type of person where you can create a safe space for anyone you know what's crazy what colleen did in that video is she still repeated the same behavior again there it's actually not learned she's not learning from her mistakes because she ended that video saying she was like thank you to whoever anyone who has supported me in any capacity she knew damn well what she was doing because that little shred of thinking her audience was putting that last nail right of the parasocial relationship She's telling people, I'm going to be extra grateful to the people who are standing by me in this. You're not like the others. You're not bashing me like the other people. You're not canceling me like the other people. You're special. That's literally what it is. I don't understand the lack of empathy. I don't understand the amount of lack of accountability, the delusion, the out of touchness. Like clearly there's something wrong there either she has become so big and so privileged that she's completely out of touch with reality that she doesn't understand the concept or the heaviness of what she has done or she literally just has something like blocking her empathy receptors or something because it just doesn't it just doesn't make sense this is not adding up at all and guys she's not going to be the only 2008 youtuber that this is gonna happen to. There are so many big YouTubers out there that like are probably gonna be exposed and stuff. Cause when I tell you that lifestyle is not normal for a human being to have, it's not normal. Final part, the importance of humanity. When I went to Playlist Live Orlando, I saw things that were very concerning and i saw youtubers partaking in those very concerning things that i never thought for a million years would be involved in that type of stuff and i'm telling you they were innocent looking youtubers innocent content creators being involved in stuff that i'm like but i ain't gonna say nothing i'm not gonna say nothing so i left that trip just completely like my eyes wide open i really want to talk about my experience of playlist live but i always get uh, tongue-tied making the video but i know for a fact i do want to make it soon because um, it really did change my perspective on how i view other influencers and how i've interacted with people on youtube because um there's the stuff that i saw it makes so much sense why people tend to go like crazy at a certain level of like fame and stuff and it's really made me understand a little bit more as to how that world works and it's even given me an insight as to why i can look at people like colleen ballinger and somewhat like i said somewhat understand why she's out of touch with reality obviously it's not an excuse but it does give reasoning behind as to why she thought that response was okay because of the loss of genuine human connection i'm not friends with other youtubers like i i don't have influencer friends if anything i feel like definitely i'm a black sheep of youtube like for real like i feel like people have lied to me so many times saying that they're going to like collab with me and then they leave me on red bye um if that was my only form of human connection i probably would have gone crazy by now but thankfully all of my close-knit relationships are with real people in the tangible universe where i can actually talk to them face to face and they don't have social media so they are actual people who are not involved with this crazy world and they are rational and in touch with the universe that i can talk to at the end of the day to unwind so i feel very blessed to have that and i think that is something important for everyone to have whether you are someone who is in a position of power or someone who is a fan of someone else let me tell you being a fan of someone is fun being part of a fandom is fun being supportive of someone is fun of course but if it gets to a point where it's taking over your life and you're starting to abandon real life relationships or just real life in general, I'm telling you now that you need to set a healthy boundary within yourself, go back into the real world, meet genuine kind people, and trust me, you're gonna feel 
so much better. Pick up a hobby that requires you to be off of your phone and off of your computer. And again, this goes for everyone. If you're a person who is an influencer or not, there is beauty in the human experience. If someone is taking up all your time to the point where you don't have time for yourself, that is a red flag. And that includes influencers. If you're following someone so much to the point where you're watching their every move, to the point where you feel more connected to them than you do yourself, that is a red flag and you need to be aware of that. And this can happen to people of all ages, by the way. No relationship is ever going to be more important than the relationship you have with yourself. You are your first best friend. You are your first inspiration. You are your first priority. And if anything is making you feel more drained or drawing your attention to elsewhere, and it's making you feel a little iffy, if it's making you feel anxious, if you like you have to walk on eggshells around it if you feel like it's taking away from your own feelings and how you feel you have the ability to set boundaries you have the ability to walk away and if that parasocial relationship or if that relationship in your life is leading you astray from your true authentic self i'm telling you now it's not a relationship worth having i want to tell you right now that you are seen you are valid you're not crazy you're not making it up in your head you deserve to take a break and heal you deserve to find genuine human connection with others that won't hurt you you deserve to have kind relationships that <laughs> won't drain you or make you feel bad about yourself but most importantly you deserve closure whether that person is willing to give it to you or not all right guys that is it for today's video i know that this video was very different it was a lot heavier this topic was not something i was ever expecting to make a video on ever i think a lot of people are genuinely disappointed and shocked in just whenever Whenever this happens, not even with Colleen, just whenever we see people in power take advantage of their power um, over people who don't have power, it's always disappointing to see. It's always a loss for humanity because we should all be brought together and we should all just love each other and just be kind. And it's just, it's always crappy to see when these things happen. I know that this topic is going to be very iffy for all types of people, especially people who are Colleen Ballinger supporters. Um, to that, I can say, go ahead and leave your comment. Usually I, I end the videos by saying, you know, comment down below what you think and this and that, which go ahead and please do that. Just keep it cute, keep it cordial. I believe that you can disagree with me. You are allowed to disagree with me, but just do so in a way where it's productive. However, I do have a special request of all of you guys. My special request to you guys is to follow Adam McIntyre. Go send him lots of love, lots of support, as well as the other members of Kalini's Weenies that have come out and talked about their stories. Just the victims in general deserve so much love and support right now. So please go ahead and do that. Um, other than that, uh, if you want more videos about stuff like this, um, and care to hear more of my perspective on these topics, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Click the notification bells, y'all know the drill. If you guys would like to follow me on any of my social medias, um, here's my Instagram. And I also have a TikTok by the same exact name because no one else has the name Salem Tovar, thankfully. And honestly, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching the entire thing. Y'all know the drill. I always give you guys homework, which is just to enjoy today. Um, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and make today count. Play some Roblox, eat some snacks, do whatever to unwind today. Just make today count. <sighs> All right, that is it. I am going to take a nap. All right. Love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.